Ahem. <clears throat> Look at this lady. Did I stutter? Look at her. Now focus on the red dot on her nose for 10 seconds. Don't look away and don't blink. All right, now once this counter's run out, I'm going to quickly switch over to a blank white screen. I need you to keep your eyes open the whole time. Are you ready? And are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yep, you can see that lady clear as day in natural colors, which means I just got you to see something that you actually didn't see. How cool is that? But how does it work? Well, follow me as we take a look at some amazing optical illusions and discover how they work. Pareidolia. Do you see human faces and things with random patterns like this coffee, this tree stump, this old wall? Some people claim they can even see a face in the moon. We see faces in everything, so with that in mind, can you see what's hidden in this image? Did you spot it? Yes, there's a face under that ear. Our tendency to find patterns like this in abstract places is called pareidolia. More often than not, we see faces where there aren't real faces because humans are super attuned to seek out faces. It's part of our social psychology. And using this to make optical illusions dates all the way back to 1880. So we've known about the phenomenon a long time. Here's another variant with a bear. See if you can spot the face. Did you get it? Right here. Easy, right? All right, warm up's over. Let's put your pareidolia to the test. How many faces do you see in this tree? You've got 10 seconds, go. All right, time's up. How many did you get? Six, seven? Let me know down in the comments and while you're there, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons as well. Okay, so how many faces were there? There's actually 10. Heck, <laughs> that's at least four more than I spotted. Right. It's time we turn this concept on its head, literally. Corrective pareidolia. Look at this picture of a face flipped upside down. While it might not seem out of the ordinary at first, look closer. See it? Let's flip it over to the correct orientation and, ah, how did that ever look normal upside down? The image had been edited in a pretty simple way. The eyes and mouth have been flipped around. Here's another example, Happy Tay-Tay. Monster Tay-Tay, what's going on here? Well, as it turns out, our minds are so hardwired to recognize and read faces that when we're presented with one that doesn't quite work, our brains tend to correct the image to make sense of it. As the eyes and mouth are so expressive, if they're readable, we can imagine the rest easily. It's believed we do this because recognizing human expressions and faces was so important to our survival as we were evolving that our brain jumps through hoops to do it. This has been dubbed the Thatcher effect. As an early example of the illusion, use British ex-prime minister Margaret Thatcher as an example. Actually, are we sure this one is even flipped? She scowled so much it's kind of hard to tell. Funnily enough, there's actually another way our brains can be tricked by eyes and mouths on faces, and that's by doubling them up. Stare at this image of a man with four eyes and two mouths. Notice how your eyes kind of slip over it? This is because your brain is trying to find an anchor point. You know that a human should have one mouth and two eyes, so you keep trying to find the correct version of the face inside these ones. Can you tell which eyes and mouths here are the originals? It's way harder than you think. I'll try this one. Impossible, right? Monster faces. As we've learned, faces can short circuit our brains pretty easily. Still, this one takes the cake. I want you to stare at the cross in the middle of the screen and do not look away. See if you notice anything strange happening. Pretty freaky, huh? What's going on here is that your brain is noticing the facial features in both the left and right images, but because they're in your peripheral vision, the face data is incomplete. 
to make sense of it, your brain smushes them together. This makes the faces seem warped, almost like caricatures when you're not looking right at them. Okay, let's make this a competition. Without looking away from the cross, can you tell who's appearing in the images on the left and right? Oh man, I thought Sid the Sloth was one of them, but it's Tom Cruise and Will Ferrell. Okay, try this one. Is one of them a witch? Damn, no. Angelina Jolie and Nicole Kidman. All right, last one. Is that dad? No, Nicolas Cage and George Clooney. Ugh, did you get any of them right? Let me know down below. All right, these are freaking me out. Who's ready for a change in perspective? Ames Room. Hands up, do we have any short kings in the audience? I see you and respect you, my brothers. Still, you're probably not this short. Dang, that dude's tiny. Or is he? Whoa, what's going on? What you're currently looking at isn't some sort of ethereal between world. It's called an Ames Room. This is a room constructed in a specially elongated way and then decorated with out of proportion patterns to conceal depth. And so it appears to be a totally normal room from the right angle. As you can see from our high-tech reconstruction, it's a pretty elaborate setup. When viewed from the right spot though, the effect called perspective compression tricks our brains into thinking something far away is actually just smaller. Ames rooms can create some really intense visuals where people in the foreground appear to be on the same plane as those further away, making it look like they're vastly different sizes. Some rooms even add in furniture or decorations that are also warped in proportion and location, but that look the same relative size in a shot like this, helping force the perspective and making the illusion more difficult to spot. But did you see through this illusion? I bet you won't with this next one though. Anamorphic. Now, perspective compression isn't the only way to warp how we see the world, as artist Regina Silvera knows all too well. Back in 2010, she created the Abyssal Exhibition, and boy, does it live up to its name. Are these guys floating over a steep drop next to a skyscraper? Not quite. The flat gallery floor has had windows on it painted at a specific angle, but when seen from an oblique angle, like on top of this perfectly placed set of stairs, the stretched windows on the floor appear like regular windows on a wall, making these guys look like they're floating. This is known as an anamorphic effect and it's mind blowing. But when applied to a much larger scale, anamorphic art gets way more interesting, as French artist JR has proven repeatedly. Back in 2021, he applied La Ferita, or the wound onto this palazzo in Florence, Italy. Now viewing it head on, it looks a little off, but if you get it at the right angle, it looks like you're peering right into the heart of the building through a gaping crack. But as huge as this is, it's not JR's biggest work. No, that'd be his takeover of the Louvre Museum. Back in 2019, he and an army of 400 volunteers painted the courtyard of the famous art museum like this. Huh, that doesn't look like anything to be honest. But if we take a look at it from this angle, holy cow. He turned the Louvre's famous glass pyramid roof into an even bigger pyramid buried beneath the ground. Visitors were allowed to get up close with it, but every step they took on the paper tore it up, gradually eroding it until big holes began appearing in this gigantic illusion. Well, I guess that's one way to see through it. Negative afterimage. All right, back to that picture of the woman from the very start of the video. How is it you were able to see this image in corrected colors when she wasn't on the screen? Want to try it again? Here, let's use a different image this time. Okay, that's quite different, but you know the drill. Focus on that dot, don't blink, and keep your eyes open. All right, white screen coming up now. Man, that's magical. Except not quite. It's all down to the cells in your eyes called ganglion receptor cells. These cells can identify pairs of colors in the images you see. Black and white, red and green, blue and yellow. These channels combine but never cross over. That's why you never see a reddy green or a bluey yellow. So when you stare at an inverted image like this, you overexpose or tire out one half of these color receptor pairs. Then when you look at the white screen, 
those exposed receptors are weak, but the opposite receptors are still firing, not as strongly as the other receptors were, but more than they are once fatigued. So the lack of green, black, and blue makes you think you're seeing a mix of red, white, and yellow, turning this negative image into a positive image. Color me impressed. Growing cars. Okay, you have five seconds for this next one. Take a look at this image and tell me, which car is the largest? Time's up. Did you say this one? Nope. How many of you said this one? Wrong again. That just leaves this one, right? Wrong. In fact, none of them are the largest because they're all the same size. Maybe this image didn't work for you, so let's change the angle. Take a look at these cars. They can't possibly all be the same size, right? Well, they are. So how the heck is this possible? Well, it's all to do with our sense of perspective again. You know that objects appear larger to us the closer they are, so when we see an image like this, our brains know that the car should be getting smaller the further away from our viewpoint they are. So if there's something in an image that makes it look like things are getting further away, which in this case is the road, then our brain thinks that if the car isn't shrinking in size, it must just be bigger. Pretty lazy brain. Pretty lazy. The Ponzo Illusion if you think we need cars, roads, and fancy rooms to mess with our perspective, then prepare to be humbled. Some of the most effective ways our brains can be tricked is with just a few lines. Here, which line do you think is bigger? Yeah, by this point, you should know it's not what you might expect. The truth is that they're the same exact size. Here's a version playing on the idea of train tracks. Do the yellow lines look different in length to you? Top one's longer, right? Well, despite what your eyes might tell you, those two yellow lines are actually the same length. The reason this happens is that the two lines on the side slanting inward creates a feeling of depth that we project onto the horizontal lines even when it isn't there. Even simpler is the Mueller liar illusion. Take a look. Now tell me which line, top or bottom, do you think is longer? While the top line may appear obviously longer, they are in fact the same size. See? Once again, it's the slanting lines that are the culprit. The top image suggests a longer horizontal line branching out, while the bottom suggests a shorter line being squished. That's it. Let's move into the real world. I'm tired of all these tricky lines. Elusive cubes. So our sense of depth can be easily fooled in 2D images, but I bet you think it's easier to spot a 3D illusion, right? Let's test it. When you spot what's really going on here, tell me down in the comments. Whoa, that cube wasn't a cube at all. That's a nifty trick considering all it takes is three pieces of paper and the right camera angle. All right, let's try again. Watch this next clip carefully and let me know when you think you've spotted something out of the ordinary. Man, I was convinced that one was a cube until the very end. I think the light in this one interferes with the shadows, making it harder to determine its real shape. The outlines on the edges of these fake cubes also help sell the illusion of depth, but again, that means they only look right from the perfect angle. Kinda like me trying on a new pair of pants. Shades of Grey. Take a look at this image. Looks like a standard chessboard, I think. I assume that cylinder is a mega queen or something? I don't know chess. Anyway, look at the squares labeled A and B. Which is the darker color? Did you say A? Congratulations. You're wrong. But A is what most people would answer. As you can see here, when the squares are placed side by side, they're actually the exact same shade. This illusion works in a similar way to the last one. We all know that when a shadow is cast over an object, its hue becomes darker. Here's a similar example called the corn sweet illusion. Take a look at the two gradients. Which side of the image would you say is darker, left or right? In reality, the far ends of the image are the same shade. We see the darker shade on the left, which colors, no pun intended, our understanding of the gradient's progression. Hmm, this sounds familiar, doesn't it? By this point, you might be realizing that a lot of optical illusions take advantage of the fact that our brains tend to fill in the gaps much more than we realize. 
Similarly to how it assumes the shadow here must be darker, it assumes the furthest car in this image must be the biggest. It's theorized our brains do this because of how important fast reaction times were during evolution. After all, if you were in the middle of the jungle and thought you spotted a tiger, would you rather stop and have a good think or get the heck out of there? Even if it just turned out to be a stripey rock. This is true in all sorts of wacky ways. Look at this image for a few seconds. Yeah, I'm willing to bet when you first saw it, you did a double take. The perspective here really makes it look like that head belongs on top of those bare shoulders. But it actually belongs to the body with the white shirt. Still, our brains would rather make a quick assumption about an image than refuse to interpret it. Our lazy brains can be tricked by the stupidest stuff, can't they? Invented motion. So we stupid humans can get easily confused by still images, but motion can be just as baffling. Case in point, what you're currently looking at is a circle moving up and down inside another circle. The movement is pretty stiff, huh? Well, in a few seconds, I'll make it smooth as butter. Let's see what happens when I put another circle here moving horizontally. Now let's add another and another. By the time we get to eight circles, something crazy happens. Instead of seeing eight individually moving circles, we're seeing one large rolling circle. If that one left you unimpressed though, then take a look at these discs. But as a word of warning, if you're sensitive to flashing lights, you should skip ahead two minutes as the next three illusions all include flashing images. What direction do you think they're moving? Did you say left, right? In reality? They aren't moving at all. See? <laughs> I love this one. Why do we think they're moving, though? Well, our brains tend to lump multiple elements of visual information, including motion, together. This means when we see a bunch of smaller moving objects, our brain tries to make sense of them by finding a way to connect them. This is how a bunch of circles moving back and forth can become a rolling circle. But it's also the reason some wobbling squiggles on a screen can look like an animated character and not just a bunch of moving lines. Sorry, I know that's probably the least magical way you can describe animation. <laughs> Let's move on. Cube movement. Speaking of animation, I want you to take a look at these moving cubes. See if you can tell which of the two of them is moving the fastest as they change direction and spin around. Did you guess neither of them? That's right, as hard as it might be to believe, neither of these cubes are moving. What's actually going on is that the strobing colors and lights on the cubes are reminiscent of movement, even though the cubes themselves are totally still. As our brains try to interpret how the cubes are moving, the arrows offer a subliminal suggestion, which our brains pick up on. Look at this even simpler version of the same trick. How many times do you think these cubes rotate in five seconds? That's right, they don't. These cubes are in fact still images with sections of their lines strobing in a manner that suggests they're spinning. If you pay attention to just one edge of a cube at a time, it becomes easy to spot. Of course, the magic doesn't come from the shapes, but from the illusion of movement. Take a look at these two color wheels. To me, the trick works even better with these than the cubes. Good thing too, <laughs> I'm getting sick of being tricked by all these dang cubes. The Spinning Dancer. For our next trick, I'm going to need a volunteer. Step right up, step right up. <laughs> you there in the audience. The silhouette of a woman comprised of 34 frames of animation. You'll be perfect. Now we have our lovely volunteer. I need something from you. Focus on the spinning dancer on your screen and try not to look away. Paying close attention, I want you to tell me. Which way is she spinning? Left? Are you sure? Look at her arm. Now look at her leg. She's spinning right, oh, or is it left? Okay, concentrate on one area and you might just force yourself to flip the animation around. Crazy, right? I promise you, the animation is a simple loop and you're not being tricked. What you just witnessed is perhaps the most popular example of what's called the silhouette illusion. The reason it works is down to the lack of clear visual information we're given. The dancer is clearly moving, however, the fact she is in silhouette means she is completely lacking in depth. This makes it harder to tell whether she is standing on her right leg and spinning left or her left leg and spinning right. For another example, check out this rotating shape. Which way does it appear to be spinning to you? 
Are you sure about that? Try looking at another corner of the image, then back. Personally, I can flip this one around pretty easily. If you've only been able to see her spinning in one direction so far, here, let me help out. Pretty spooky, no? Those simple lines are able to give our brains all the information they need to decide which way the formerly elusive dancer is spinning. And a round of applause for my lovely volunteer there. Oh, <laughs> 34 frames of her. Motion After Effects Are you ready for an old school optical illusion? And by old school, I mean ancient school, as this illusion was written about by Aristotle all the way back in 350 BCE. You see this still image of a waterfall? Well, your brain is going to make it move. Stare at the blue dot on your monitor and try not to look away for the next 20 seconds. I'll even play some soothing waterfall noises while you do. Whoa, is that river moving backwards? Actually, it's not moving at all. This is an after effect illusion originally named the waterfall illusion in the late 1800s, supposedly because if you stared at a waterfall long enough, rocks jutting out might appear as if they were moving up the water. However, it doesn't just work for vertically scrolling images. Basically, any spiraling, scrolling, or wobbling pattern can have an effect. Don't believe me? Stare at the following moving pattern for 20 seconds, then look at your keyboard. I'll wait. Okay, look now. Ah, my keyboard has turned into alphabet soup. How did this happen? Well, it's all down to the visual cortex in our brain and how we interpret moving patterns. The longer we remain fixated on a motion or a moving pattern, the more dulled the response time of cells in our visual cortex become, such that when we look away from the source of that movement, our brains are essentially still looking for it and place it over whatever we're looking at. Interestingly, this often has the effect of creating movement inverse to what we were just looking at. This is why that river appeared to be flowing backwards. Maybe if I watch a time lapse of someone going bald and look in the mirror, I'll remember what it was like to have hair. Motion induced blindness. Be honest, how are your eyes doing? Sorry to say, but they can't rest yet. Set your peepers on the dot in the middle of this image and concentrate hard. After a few seconds, you might start to notice something. Or should I say, stop noticing something. If you're still looking at that dot in the center of the screen, you're probably experiencing what's called motion-induced blindness. Here's another variant I find works even better. Remember, focus on the dot. After you do for a few seconds, can you tell what the objects on the wheel are? I can't. Motion-induced blindness refers to a phenomenon where information in our peripheral vision seems to fade away when motion is introduced to the center of our field of view. While there are numerous theories as to why this happens, one that seems to make sense is that our brain is eliminating extraneous information. That is to say, if something is rushing straight at you or you're speeding towards something, that thing is probably more important than anything to either side of you. Probably. Oh, a cupcake! Varying speed. Take a look at the following loop. Kinda trippy, right? It just goes on forever. How fast would you say the camera is traveling here? Walking pace? Zooming along? Well, try this out. Using your hands, cover the left and right sides of the image so you're only focusing on the center. Huh, weird. I could have sworn we were traveling faster than that. Okay, let's try the opposite now. Cover the middle of the image and look at the edges. Whoa, we're zooming now. While the effect here is dramatic, it makes total sense. The middle part of the image here doesn't actually change too much as we move ahead. It's more like the horizon is constantly slowly coming into view. By contrast, on the outer edges, details come into focus and leave in the blink of an eye. You can test this out in the real world too. Just hop in a Formula One car, drive at max speed, and look away from the road. 
<laughs> do not, do not, do not, do not actually do this. That would be insane. Parallax. I know we've gone over some crazy stuff in this video and have had a lot of our preconceived notions questioned, but still, we can all at least agree that commercial planes can't hover. They can fly forward, but they can't hover. Everyone knows the... What the heck? Okay, don't panic. This isn't proof you're living in a video game that's glitching out. <laughs> what you're looking at here is what's known as the parallax effect. It occurs when objects in motion are witnessed by a spectator whose viewpoint is also changing. It's most pronounced when the viewer is moving faster than the observed object. Here, the filmer is also in a fast-moving plane, creating the illusion the plane in the window is hovering in the same spot. It's easy to spot this effect with planes as they tend to, you know, be easy to spot themselves. However, the effect can also occur in standard photography, like in this drone shot of the Eiffel Tower. See how the foreground and background appear to be scrolling in different directions? That's because their relative positions are changing in relation to the camera. So next time you see a plane frozen in the air, just remember, it's only a movement-based optical illusion. Either that or you need to restart the matrix. Segmented animation. Speaking of movement, here's a fun one. Take a look at this wonderful piece of artwork. What does it look like to you? A Rorschach test? No, it couldn't be more obvious what it is. Oh well. Here, maybe this will make it more obvious. Here's another. What does it look like to you? A beautiful flower, perhaps? Let's take a look. The reason these segmented animation illusions work is similar to how a zoetrope works. Zoetropes are those physical disks or cylinders you spin to reveal a little animation. The multiple images in a zoetrope act as the frames of the short animation. When it's spun fast enough, her eyes stop distinguishing those as individual frames and blend them together into one fluid animation. Similarly, every frame of these segmented animations is present at once. That's why they look like weird blobs. When a sheet of paper with missing sections is run over the static image, it blocks out certain frames whilst leaving others visible. This leads to the illusion of movement and the animation works forwards and backwards. Interestingly, segmenting our field of view can mess with our perception of speed and movement too. Take a look at the following animation and tell me, are the blocks moving at the same or different rates? To me, the blue block appears slightly ahead while the yellow block is trailing a little behind. Let's see if that's true. Wow, looks like they're actually moving at the same speed. This is likely because the darker bar blends in more with the dark lines while the yellow bar sticks out, making its movement appear more segmented. All right, I'm getting a little motion sick. Who wants to take a break and grab a coffee? Cafe Wall Illusion. Okay, we've seen a lot of wacky motion, animation, and camera trickery so far. For this next illusion, I want to go back to something simpler. As simple as you can imagine, really. Take a look at this picture and tell me, are the lines in it straight or not? Hmm, feels like it shouldn't be that hard to answer, does it? Well, how about we get rid of all those weird shapes and colors and really get down to basics? There, that's better. So are these lines straight? No, they can't possibly be, can they? Well, those two images are examples of what have come to be known as the cafe wall illusion, and the lines in both of them are completely straight. Don't believe me? Here, let's zoom in. What? The line doesn't slope at all. What's going on here? Well, the really mind-blowing thing is, no one really knows. Since it was first discovered by Hugo Munsterberg back in 1894, the leading theory has been that it comes down to the way our brains interpret contrast. Different neurons in our brains respond to dark and light colors. This means that darker lines between the white and black squares are being simultaneously interpreted in two different ways, which causes the illusion of sloping lines. 
In this version of the illusion, the same effect is perhaps being triggered by these, the little checkered squares running along the horizontal lines. However, that's still only a theory, but it's a theory that would explain why it isn't limited to just horizontal patterns. Check out this variant, but don't fall in. While this image may appear to be a deep spirally vortex, look closer. That's right, those circles don't connect at all. It's just multiple circles, not a spiral. Crazy, right? Here's one final image, take a look. Here, the lines don't appear to slope, but bulge like the image is being pinched or squeezed. Still, when we zoom in, we can see that every line in the image is perfectly straight. Blah, what cafe would put something this disorienting on a wall? The Coffer Illusion Look at this image and tell me, what shapes do you see? Squares, right? Maybe you said lines. You probably didn't say circles, though. That's right, there are circles in this image. Can you see them? All right, I'll point them out. Here, still having trouble? Okay, let's zoom in. This is known as the Coffer Illusion and was created by the Neural Correlate Society in 2006 as an entry for the Best Illusion of the Year contest, which I really wish I knew about before starting this video. Anyway, while you almost certainly picked up on the rectangular shapes first, if you stare hard enough, you'll find that vertical bars actually create perfect circles. One theory on this illusion posits that when visual information is unclear, our brains are more likely to search for corners or hard angles as they're anchor points from which we can try and make sense of the rest of the information. Who knew quarters could be so confusing? That must be why I cut them all the time. Well, those were some of the craziest brain-busting illusions I was able to find. Which was your favorite? Did I miss any good ones? Let me know in the comments down below, and thanks for watching.